Hello everyone, Cynthia here with another Rambler for you. And uh, today I want to begin talking about um, Christian theology. It's a series that I want to do, kind of an introduction uh, to it. Uh, There's a couple of reasons for this. The first is it has a huge impact on my worldview, and because I'm going to be speaking from that worldview, I think it's helpful if people actually understand sort of the things that I personally believe. And for that, I kind of need to build up sort of theology. Um... There's a, another sort of more flippant answer, which is, I really would like it when people mock Christians for their beliefs if they actually mocked the things that Christians believe instead of not. But uh, like I said, that's kind of a, a flippant answer. So before I can actually like go into Christian theology proper itself, however, I kind of want to go over a couple of things. The first of which is, what is theology in the first place? So theology is a word that comes from a couple of Greek words, uh, theos, uh, which is God, and logia, which would be like words or talking. And sort of the the dictionary definition of it is the study of the nature of God and religious belief or religious beliefs and theory when systematically developed. So it's kind of, uh, think about how like psychology is kind of like the study of the psyche, right? And this is kind of like the study of God or the study of the divine. Um, And before I can actually then talk about the specific subjects, I need to go over where does it come from? Like how do people do this sort of, what is the source of theology? And, and that's going to be the topic of this rambler, is how is theology sourced? So when it comes to uh, Christian theology, one big significant source, which is obviously the Bible, um, Christians talk about it a lot. Now, I want to talk a lot about the structure of the Bible, uh, just that way people have an understanding of what's in there and, and what's going on. Um, but before I do that, I kind of want to talk about some of the other sources, just because the the Bible part will be kind of lengthier, I think. I haven't talked about it yet, but my guess is it'll be a little bit lengthier, um, and so I kind of want to get through some of the other stuff first. So, one of the uh, next big sources is tradition. Um, so, I'm going to kind of break tradition up into a couple of different categories. Um, what I'm going to call sort of a, um, a literary tradition, and that should hopefully make sense in just a second. Uh, And the second is uh, what I'm going to call a cultural tradition. So literary tradition would be uh, a body of of work that other people have done, kind of extra-biblical text sources. So this is going to be... um, come in in the form of a couple of different things. Uh, Commentaries is one of them. So what a commentary is, is a discussion about some part of the Bible. That's typically is what it is. Like if you think about like a commentary on a movie, for example, they're going to have some people who have some reason of doing it and they're going to sit down and they're going to talk about the movie. Usually it's going to be somebody who was part of making that movie, a director, a writer, um, an actor, something like that. And they're going to be able to, to give kind of additional information. So what a commentary is in biblical sense, like when you're talking about the Bible in, in a commentary form, it's going to be something where you're going to say, okay, here's kind of what my thoughts are on this passage. And usually the more regarded ones are going to be done by scholars or monks or people who dedicated themselves to that process. There have been a lot of different ones over the years. Um, they can be very helpful because one of the big things that's really important is understanding sort of the context, the greater context of things. And commentaries can be a great way for people who have really dedicated a lot of time to studying this stuff to be able to share what they've learned that gives them context about a particular passage, um, passage being here a section of text from the Bible. Uh, I want to try to define my terms because one of the things that I'm aware of is that when you're in part of a, a culture, uh, such as being a Christian or being a computer programmer, um, being a, a gamer, whenever you're in one of these sorts of groups, you will develop jargon. And I'm keenly aware of this. And uh, one of these future episodes is definitely going to be about Christian jargon. But for now, I'm going to try to make sure I, I explain stuff. So just to get a couple of things um, out while I'm thinking about this subject, uh, when I say passage, that's going to just be referring to some amount of of text from the Bible. Usually it's going to be, you know, a few paragraphs or something. Now, the Bible itself, uh, there's there's some structure there, so we it's broken down in ways to uh, make it easy to look stuff up. Uh, if you've ever done, like, references for a normal book, 
you'll know if like, oh, you have to be like this page number and hope everybody has the same version with the same page numbers and stuff. Um, the Bible, in order to alleviate this, has a bunch of numbers in it to, separating things out so that way you can kind of pick out specific things. So those are going to be verses. That's uh, I just want to make sure you know that term because I'm probably going to use it without thinking. Um, so anyway, commentaries will will go on that. Um, so that's one big part. Um, then you also have like recorded sermons. Um, this is, I'll get into that in a little bit more detail in a bit, but, um, you'll have things where people have like a sermon that has been recorded and, and transcribed. And so you can kind of read that and that tends to, um, revolve around thought. So that tends to more build off of, um, biblical stuff. And what you'll see with that then is sort of developing ideas and referencing the Bible um, as sourcing those ideas, hopefully, um, if it's not rooted in... So this is this is a big thing for me. Um, I think that Christian theology needs to be soundly rooted in the Bible, and if it's not, I question it greatly. Um, and there are some reasons for that. Um, the big one being that it's very easy for human beings to try to... <sighs> develop answers for stuff and these answers may just be kind of like us coming up with something that sounds nice um or makes us feel better or whatever and that's something that that's a huge subject that i don't quite want to get into here but i do want to get into later so this is this is going to have a lot of subjects that get brought up that i will then uh talk about in more detail in future um ramblers in this series uh, that's just something you can expect from this one um so anyway you can have like recorded sermons things like that um you can also like have kind of um, more of a like a research paper type of thing that's like oh here's how i've studied this so kind of like more um academic papers kind of thing now that doesn't necessarily come up a whole lot um and then, so that's kind of the literary tradition angle of things. Moving on from, from there, we have, like I was mentioning, the cultural tradition. So cultural tradition is sort of ideas uh, that have kind of built up. It's, it's, I mean, I'm using cultural tradition, but it's just kind of the way that culture in general works, where things get propagated because of stuff. Like, it's really nebulous. Um, so there'll be, like, sort of the idea that oh um everybody's kind of agreed on on this thing and it's it's messy and definitely again it's another subject worth digging more deeply into uh, but just be aware that sometimes this cultural stuff is based on biblical sourcing sometimes it's not and that's kind of where it gets murky there's a lot of stuff where uh and I have to kind of decide on the fly how uh, complicated I want to make this one. There's a lot of stuff where ideas about religiousness can sort of come about that aren't based in biblical text. So there's there's definitely a cultural aspect of how Christian theology gets developed. Uh, now, I should state that like each person kind of has their own theology, uh, and often we try to communicate that to other people, and there's usually some amount of commonality. Um, but that's part of the reason why there's so many different Christian denominations, is each denomination will have, like, different things they emphasize. And some of those are, like, stylistic things. Some of those are actually, like, theological differences. It's very complicated. But anyway, so there's culture. Uh, that's a source. Now, for an individual person, usually what you'll find is that a lot of their theology is probably going to be shaped by preachers. So these are going to be, or, or pastors is another term that will get used, or like priest or minister. Um, basically somebody who is viewed as qualified to teach about theology. Uh, now there are schools, uh, they're called seminary because, and um, so that you can get like a degree in divinity. There's like a master's of divinity and stuff like that. I've not looked in any of that. I don't have any uh, education in any of that sort of stuff. I'm just a computer programmer who's really enthusiastic about his theology. So preachers or 
again, teachers, whatever you want to call them, are usually going to be seen as, as people who have a certain level of qualification to teach, and they're going to then deliver sermon. So this is usually a verbal presentation where they talk about some sort of topic and build up theology, and their goal is to sort of transmit what they see as correct theology to other people. Um, that's kind of their goal. So this is an, a big way that a lot of it gets developed. Um, so kind of how their theology develops is very, very important to the overall um, Christian body. So anyway, that's um, that's one uh, or another avenue that um, theology gets developed. Uh, so those are a couple of uh, the the major sources. Now, for the, the Bible itself, and like I was saying originally, to me, um, the Bible is kind of the authority of Christian theology and everything else is kind of being built on it or should be attempted to be built on it or from it. Um, so the Bible, therefore, is very, very important. Now, I don't want to, at this point, get into like too much of a discussion about um, historicity or any of that sort of stuff, because fundamentally, you either believe that the Bible is sufficiently accurate to be able to build your worldview around, or you don't. And if you don't think it is sufficiently accurate, I'm not here to try to prove that it is. I'm here to say this is how people use it. So, uh, I, again, my intention is so that way people can understand my viewpoint where I'm coming from, not necessarily to try to say, oh, you have to believe this specific thing. While I think it would be great if a non-Christian listening to this series is like, oh, what he's saying makes a lot of sense. I think I want to become a Christian. That would be amazing, but that's not my goal. Um, so anyway, the Bible itself is broken up into a couple of different sections. Um, the first section, if we're looking at it from the way that it's usually organized, is what's called the Old Testament. And then there's the New Testament. So they're broken up into two, two different parts like this. Um, it's there's a, a span of time between them, but the significance is that the Old Testament is sort of the um, Jewish religious documents. They're, they were originally written in like Hebrew or, or variants on that, um, sort of like Chaldean or something. But those are, are written in, in Hebrew, and the New Testament was primarily written in Greek. And so when you look at, at that, there the New Testament develops... The actual Christian theology, the Old Testament develops um, Old Testament, uh, or the Jewish theology. The the difference, or actually, the Old Testament is predominantly like historical documents, like what happened to the ancient nation of Israel. Um, it has uh, a couple of different broad sections, so it has sort of the um, the Torah or the Pentateuch, uh, whatever you want to call it, the the Mosaic writings. Um, those are uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. I'm not going to get in a lot of detail on all of these sections, but that one's kind of significant because that's where like a lot of the Levitical law is and all that sort of stuff. And what you have there, uh, from there, it kind of goes into sort of the history of the nation of Israel. There's that section. Then there's like a section on like poetry and uh, like the Psalms uh, you may or may not have heard of. That's a bunch of like sort of religious poetry um, slash music songs, song lyrics sort of thing is my impression anyway. And then you've got um, the, the prophets. So the major prophets and the minor prophets, um, the major prophets being ones that wrote a lot of prophecies and the minor prophets being ones that didn't write very many. Um, probably the most famous major prophet would be Daniel. Uh, he has the stuff about the lion's den, and that's about like half half of the book is kind of like that sort of stuff, and half of the book is really trippy vision stuff. So, um, and then the minor prophets, the most famous of those would be Jonah. So all of that is sort of like like I said, that's uh, the Jewish text. So then we have the New Testament, which is more of the um, Christian end angle of things, and that is composed of the Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts, which is early church history, uh, also written by Luke. And then you have the epistles or letters, um, epistle being a fancy word for letter. And that is 
predominantly written by Paul, um, who you're probably going to hear a lot about. And then there's um, a few others uh, written by a few other uh, individuals uh, that kind of finish out the the structure of the Bible. Um, So the reason why these are kind of brought together uh, into one thing... Oh, um, before I continue on, I actually should mention um, the, the different... Um, sections of the Old Testament and the New Testament are broken down into individual books. I, that's just what they call them. So that's where the, like Genesis, for example, um, is a book. Uh, the Gospel of Mark is a book. You can't see my finger quotes when I'm doing that, but books are typically broken down into chapters, and then chapters are typically broken down into verses. There's a couple, um, generally epistles, that are like super short. Um, sometimes some of the minor prophets as well that don't really have chapters they just have verses just they're just not long enough to warrant like multiple chapters um so anyway uh the the reason why things are kind of broken down christians believe that the old jewish god is the same god as they worship uh and there's a whole lot of complicated stuff there that i'll probably want to get into at at a later point but this is kind of um where the source of theology is derived from. So it's different things presented in the Bible um, because the the God that Christians follow, uh, Jesus, uh, being the uh, human incarnation is the idea, is seen as the same deity as was presented to the Jewish nation as represented through the um, Jewish scriptures, um, the, the Jewish text. And that's why the Old Testament is such an important part to Christians. It is seen as the same deity presenting a consistent individual. So um, it's there's a lot of complicated stuff there that I'll, I'll get into in some future ones. Uh, so the, the important thing here then is, is just stepping back and kind of recapping a bit. Christian theology, or sort of the idea about God and, and religion and that sort of stuff, is sourced and it's very important to understand where the sourcing comes from. It's sourced primarily from the Bible. That's the uh, sort of grounding source, or it, it should be. Now, it's really easy to distort what the Bible says about things, uh, and that's a topic that I'll probably get into in more detail later. And then, uh, like, various traditions, so literary traditions and cultural traditions. And there's, there's also some other sort of traditions, like um, the uh, Gospels generally don't have a stated author, but it's like church tradition is that such and such person wrote them. And that's just kind of what people have kept with. Like nowhere does it say Genesis, Exodus, um, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Those first five books were written by Moses, but that's the tradition. So everybody kind of goes with it. There's not a great reason to sort of like say, oh, that's not true. But anyway, that's, um, like I said, that's that's the, uh, tr- so there's some amount of tradition that's that way as well. It's just like knowledge that's embedded in the culture sort of thing. And um, like there have definitely been people who looked into it. Uh, I have a study Bible that goes into more detail about some of the author stuff and what some of the ideas are about like when things are written and who wrote them and stuff like that. So it's not something that's not been uh, critically examined, uh, but just to make sure people are aware that that's also part of like tradition. Uh, And then sort of that literary tradition has things like commentaries, which are what people think different Bible passages are trying to say, um, what ideas they kind of can glean from them. And then like recorded sermons as well as spoken sermons, academic papers, things like that. Um, I should also mention personal revelation. Uh, This is a, a somewhat complicated topic, but it's the idea that, Christians believe that God is alive and active, and as such, there's no reason why he can't just like be like, yeah, here's a piece of information for you. So that's another sort of source of theology, but that one's, I think it's valid, but it's very hard to sort of um, vouch for in a, a broad sense, if that makes uh, sense. So it's like, well, yeah, anybody can kind of say that, right? So to try to um, to claim it can can indeed be true, but you have to convince other people, and it might be something that's like meant for that individual. So anyway, I'll probably talk in more in depth about. Uh, well, I I will talk about 
more in depth about many different topics, but I wanted to lay this sort of groundwork so that way people understood where theology came from. Uh, Because I think it's really important to understand that these ideas have been built up from somewhere. And for a lot of Christians, it's very easy to sort of, if especially if you're more cultural in your Christianity. So in that sense, you're kind of following more of the cultural traditions, maybe going and hearing some sermons, but it's perhaps not taken on the same sort of seriousness of somebody who's pursuing it. Uh, like, and I'm trying to be respectful in the way that I phrase these things here, but there's a certain level of like personal pursuit versus just part of your culture. And it's, it's hard to kind of explain and break it down right now. And I don't want to take a ton of time on it, but it's very easy for there to be people who have a culture of being Christian. Again, you can't see my finger quotes, but they're there where sort of the values that are being imparted culturally are there, but there's perhaps not the critical examination of the where's the biblical source for these, right? And that's where things get kind of complicated. That's where you see an intersection between religion and culture, and that's something that I'm re- really fascinated by as well, and I'll be getting into that as well, um, ag- again, in future. So things to look forward to in this particular series are more of an examination of what are the Christian beliefs What are, like, where do some of those beliefs come from? Um, And just different different things like that. Um, In particular, there's a couple of very important, like, groundwork ideas that need to be laid out. Uh, One of the biggest ones is, what is sin? Hint, it's not delicious chocolate. Uh, I have no idea where that came from. Well, that's not true. I have some idea of where it came from, but it's very strange. So, anyway, I just wanted to get sort of that that sourcing down... Um, there's, there's definitely other areas where things can come from as far as exploring concepts. So I don't think that truth, as, as one might claim such things, is exclusive to like Christianity or the Bible. I think that there are different ways to learn about different concepts that are presented in the, in the Bible as well. So one that particularly comes to my mind is sort of this idea of name or reputation, which is really significant, uh, particularly talked about a lot in the Old Testament. And that concept for me was actually really understood best after I watched um, the anime Overlord, which has that concept of a name being a significant thing. And that helped me understand that idea. So there's definitely different ways that sort of that stuff can build. Um, And something else that just came to mind, again, these are going to be stream of consciousness, so expect that, uh, is sort of looking at what was created in nature because if god created the world the the natural world it should give clues about what sort of creator he is so i should also mention while it's in my mind the he is kind of a traditional element as well just because masculinity has been associated with authority historically speaking and sort of that that tradition is there from that standpoint So anyway, I thank you for listening. I hope that this has been educational and I hope that you look forward to the future parts of it. So take care, everyone. Bye-bye.